Arts and Crafts! Kids of time, everyone's been having that money. Okay, the I'm back here again with another episode of Cure Tips. Today, I'm going to be talking about all the traditions. Not really. I'm going to be talking about arts and crafts. Qatari ones. Today, I'm going to list five traditional crafts that are still being done in Qatar from way back when. From a long time ago. It's like a really long time ago. So, Qatar does have a history of craftsmanship. We have to survive in the desert. We had stuff. We needed to build houses, and ropes, and wool, and loads of stuff. Survival is hot. So there's a lot of history of craftsmanship. Some of these crafts are still being done today in Doha. Not necessarily only in Doha. There's stuff happening in Al Khor and Al Wakra and Dhan. Yani, let's be real, Yani. There's still people around. What are we talking about here? You think all of us live in Doha? Other places have beds too. Number one, sedu weaving. Now, what is a sedu? Sedu, we've seen it everywhere. If you've been in Doha, you'll see it everywhere. It's got red, black, and geometrical patterns, and it's all on top of each other. There's like parallel lines, and one of them is like this. And sedu weaving now is all about cushions and, and seating areas and things like that. Where we see those patterns mostly is in that and in the Beit Sha'af. So the houses, the Beit Sha'af, the tents, they'd have them on the walls as well. So sedu weaving is done using a lot of material. You've got sheep wool, Camel hair, goat hair, cotton, all of these things weaved together to create the sedu. They're also used for bags, saddle, rope, straps, camel gear. Pimp my camel. Jim, don't leave me, man. Don't put yourself in a position that we're gonna leave. Number two is El Khos. What is El Khos? That's from the palm trees, the ones that gives us the dates. So El Khos or palm Frond weaving is a tradition that's been happening for a very long time in our history. It is almost, you know, non-existent in it, today, uh, but it does come alive in cultural celebrations and events and things like that. You'll see it happening in front of you. Traditionally, bags, mats, pouches, other things for Qataris, like from way back when. Let's go to Sugwaga and you see like all the little, the ones that put all the bread on, you know, it's made from palm fronds. There's me and these palm fronds. Another craft from the past. Gypsum carving and decorating. So gypsum carving, why gypsum carving? Because it's material that can last in these severe conditions that we are here, if I haven't mentioned before. It's hot! So gypsum would withstand these weather conditions, humidity, heat, all these things. And what was it used for? It was used for decorations, mostly. Predominantly, people would put it on front of their houses and decorate their mosques. It just made them look nice. And it was uh, mostly floral patterns and then some kind of geometric architectural patterns as well. It's widely practiced in the Gulf region, so it will change from region to region. Sometimes it's a regional thing. Another craft that was practiced, of course, is pottery. Pottery was very important. We're always on the move. Think about it. You're either living in a nomadic tribe or you're on a seafront small city so there's not a lot of stuff going on you got to work with what you have and historically in Qatar they'd get clay that was found in a Bukhira and they would make pottery from it and what were they using it for they were using it for water uh, cooling, maintaining water is clean. Kitchen, they created kitchenware so that they can cook it. F food preservation obviously is key you know, moving around constantly you need something to keep the keep the food healthy and clean for you to have a little snack while you're on the go. And then they were distinguished. There was different types and things, items created, distinguished by size and patterns. For example, al buq or al girsha, used for cooling water. Or another one is al burma, which is the pot that you cook in. So they all had distinguished size and shapes. They had names. There you go. There you go. Final craft of the day. Goldsmithing and jewelry design. Of course. Remember? Pearl diving. All that trade happening. Gold exchanging hands. People exchanging hands. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not saying that. Like literal hands. <laughs> I don't know. It was a long time ago. Jewelry production and craft and design is one of Qatar's oldest crafts. The main ingredients were gold, 
precious stone, pearls. These were all the items they were using for jewelry design and goldsmith. It was so popular that when the families, the ones that got really good at it or had a specific skill set that they were known for, they were named after that. The family tribe name was named after that because they were so good at this one thing. Like if I was a welder, I would be called Hamad the Welder. I'm the welder. You come with me? You better step up with that heat, son. You play with matches, you get burned. It's good to know that jewelry design is still happening because we're seeing a generation of young Qatari male and female artists and jewelry designers still doing their thing, selling their designing jewelry, selling it on Instagram. They're coming in the Doha Jewelry Watch exhibition. They got their stands there they're you know they're designing jewelry so it's good keep the traditions alive yeah <laughs> no school like the old school those are the five things we have said the weaving then we have al khos and then we have gypsum carving pottery goldsmithing and jewelry design very artistic hey don't forget it eh? like share subscribe